Go on, Sam. <laughs> Hi guys, we're back at Smash Fishing. We're currently waiting for Sam to come down and we're back at the conga spot where we caught them on the hand lines. Fingers crossed we can get that giant one that we missed. So stay tuned, we've got the underwater cameras with us as well. It's Smash Fishing, baby. Woo! Got my extendable pole today with the other GoPro on, so maybe we can get right down into the cracks of the rocks where the big eels lie and we might be able to get some underwater footage of them. Got the good old bike with me today. And this little contraption I made up is this is from my old live well and you can see plenty of holes in it and uh, I just tied a string to the handle and what I'm gonna do is once I get my bag out we're gonna fill this full of squid uh, fish oil and fish heads and hopefully that will attract the giant one out because the bigger ones seem to be a bit more timid and don't take the bait so much so fingers crossed with this much fish oil and scent in the water we can get them What I've got here is just some really old squid stuff that uh, from old catch and cooks where we've done a cook and this is what we save all the guts and the heads for. It's for chum and uh, conga baits. You can see there's a whole squid head there. There's the eye. And uh, all of this is going in the chum bucket. What I'm gonna do first though, is I'm gonna tenderize it like a piece of fried chicken. And that will release a lot of oils in the water and just give us a better scent trail basically. And all of that goes in there and i've got a few bits of mackerel and old cut off bits of long nose that we're gonna put in there as well and then when i get down there i'm not going to do it up here and we're going to put loads of fish oil all over it and then we we'll close this up and then when this is hanging in the water column all of the scent is going to pour out of there and it's going to track the conga from a long way what we're using to hook these is uh earl's fishing gave me some of these ball bear and swivel clips and these are really strong so i'm gonna I put one of these on and then what, what i've made up is just some standard conga rigs without the breakaway on and then we got the ato cox and roll hook because these have got a smaller barb and they're a lot easier to release because a lot of this is just for fun we're just doing it as a bit of sport so we don't want to damage the fish too much just a little pier little piercing in the mouth and they'll all go back fine so just get that on untangled and what we've got here is a big barrel swivel and all we do with it is just unclip it and then you can get that on there and the idea of it is you've got two swivels there so when the conga you hook them and they spin up it doesn't twist all your line up this should take the brunt of all of that force really so there you go big old hook we're going to use little bits of cut bait fingers crossed we can land a monster It's a nice big ledge here where I'm going to sit the chum bucket straight on top of that so the congas can swim round and we can see them and then he's got these holes here where we can drop the lines down and hopefully land them. So I'm just going to get the chum bucket out, hopefully Sam turns up soon. I'm just going to take the garfish head off because there's always a lot of juice inside those. Just give it a few, a few slices in there. The whole idea is just to get as much blood out of it all as you can. Um, these these little bits would all be little cut baits and uh, we'll try and catch them the same way we did last time so obviously we're a lot more prepared this time because we did not expect it <laughs> Sammy boy has turned up you ready to try and catch a monster, my friend? Oh, ready. <laughs> really excited for this. Sam's just brought down some uh, some mackerel, and this is ideal for attracting fish in. So we're going to chuck that in as well. Look at that! All the blood in the heads and stuff. That's what you want. A lot of people were mentioning the uh, the lights in the last video, but um, what I say is congas are mainly scent feeders. And obviously they've got their lateral line. Often we see congas that are completely blind. So the light doesn't bother congas whatsoever. 
if there's food around, if there's fish scent, they will come after it. So what we're gonna do, so you can see, we've got all of the fish bait in there, the squid, and then, look at that for thick fish oil. If I put some in the water, that would create a huge slick. Don't need a huge amount, because last time it was only a few fish carcasses that actually brought them in. You can see it's shining already, the water. <laughs> All we're gonna do guys is just flick it and try and get it right right onto that that ledge there. Don't know if you can see that there guys, how much oil and particles are coming out of that chum slick. And we're just gonna sit down for about half an hour and just wait for them. And now it's sitting perfectly on that rock. And that is exactly what we wanted. We got big holes underneath us. And uh, I got it wrong before. We're actually in the same spot that we was last time. So yeah, interesting. So all we got to do now is just simply just wait for a fish to show up. typical way eh? when we don't have a lobster trap you see a lobster <laughs> there's a lobster down here guys just poking his claws out of a hole and hopefully his friend mr eel turns up that was a big lobster <laughs> <laughs> look at this guys i've got a little snare on here that i'm trying to hook a lobster with i don't know how we're gonna do it but he's there he's big he's big Here we go again guys, the congas are turning up. It only took an hour of chumming though. <laughs> oh, there we go. Look at that, what a beauty. That's not a bad one, about double figure, probably about 10 pound. Nice size eel. Hopefully his great great grandma comes along. Look at this guys. I rubbed some fish on the camera and he was trying to bite it. <laughs> awesome. We're just waiting for a few more to start turning up. Then we're gonna start fishing for these bad boys. Nice to see them coming in though, bossy. Yeah. Here we go, guys. There's another conga here. Bit of a smaller one, he's just trying to get at the bucket. That's why this bucket is ideal. We've got bits of fish just floating out of it. Going all through the water column here. And you can see, he just wants to have a munch on it, but he can't. There's no breaking our, our crab pots this time. <laughs> Look at that, so close. And like we said, they are not scared of lights in any way. They are primarily scent feeders. So they smell something come out of it because they live in pitch black holes underneath the rocks. So they haven't got a lot of use for eyesight, as you can see. You can flash around your light, you can splash the water, and this thing will not be scared. The lovely size eel down here. I'm just trying to tempt him up. You can smell it. He can smell it, all right? That is a nice one, eh? Yeah. What do you reckon? About 16, 17, maybe a bit more? It looks like it. Oh, look, he's going it's straight past away, it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, check this out, guys. There's a massive one down here. I'm not sure how big he is. I've got my bait right in front of him, but he's not. He's a bit timid, eh? Mm, I don't think he wants it. We've got such a scent bomb going off in this water at the moment that you can't see through the water very clear. Smart that. Oh, he's got it. Oh, oh. Almost. he's got it. Oh, oh he popped. popped out of his mouth. Here we go, guys. He's right next to him. He wants that. He's got it. Ready? Oh, 
That's a good eel, that one. <laughs> Woohoo! Come on, big boy. Oh, that's a fighter, this one, eh? Look at him, guy. <laughs> so, that's a nice size eel, that one, guys. What a beauty. Sam's just going to get his camera out of his bag and then uh, get a little stand-up shot for you. What a beauty. Another conga, baby. There we go, guys. Look at that. Another lovely conga there. I reckon about, I don't know, it's a bit bigger than I thought actually. Do you reckon give that 14? Yeah, I reckon that's about 4 or 15. Yeah, about 14, 15 pounder there, guys. That's an absolutely lovely fish. Really solid as well. Hooked perfectly in the side of the jaw. Hit a croaking. Hell yeah. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to dispatch this one because uh, we don't want to catch a giant one for a cook-up. This one's about perfect size. So we're getting dispatched and we're going to hopefully get a grandma. It's really difficult to do when you're on really slippery rocks like we're on today. What we don't want is the fish sliding off down the uh, down the uh, down the rocks. <laughs> Last thing we want to do is lose it. There we go. See, this is the sort of conga that we we don't mind eating this sort of size, but uh, anything smaller or bigger, we'd rather put back. But that's, that's got to be 15 pound, that eel. And look at that. And the gnashes on those. To get your hands stuck in there, you will know about it. And they've got serious uh, jaw power as well. So that one's going to get put off on the rock. And I'll be riding the name of that later on. Mr. Conger Eel. What a beast. It's a good sign that the big eels are starting to show up. Chuff with that. That's a lovely size eating eel, that one. Oh. And someone that lives with me at home, they will, uh, they asked for a bit of conga. So they'll be getting a good chunk of this as well. And I'm going to uh, show you guys how I like to bake it in the oven. Baked conga eel is absolutely delicious. So this one's going to rest there. It's perfectly dispatched. No suffering involved. And hopefully we can get a big one. That lobster's come back, guys. I don't know if you can see that. It's the beauty of a lobster. Just walking along the bottom there. It's got to be a good three pounder at least. Shame, like I, I was, I was thinking about bringing a snare, a snare with me today, just for if we did see any lobsters, we could catch them. But sod's law, you don't bring it, and then boom, you see lobsters everywhere. Got that one, guys. Another decent eel there. Probably about the same size, about the fifteen pound mark. This one's all sand. I'm keeping my uh, my lure out the water. I'm gonna take a step back. And hopefully he can catch this mammoth. Check this out guys, look, it's right next to him. Literally right next to him. That's a decent eel as well, eh mate? Not bad. Yeah. Yeah. The head on that. Look at this eel guys. Decent sized one as well. Right next to Sam's bait. <laughs> it's just trying to find the uh it's just trying to find the oh it's the coming scent. up to the scent of that yeah oh, i love this it's so exciting eh, when you see them coming out like this here you are sam let if i move out your way mate after that bucket hey that one's a good eel mate that one's a good 15 pounder look at that guys look what an absolute beast put near his head mate don't let him go look at that oh he's a nice one that that's got that's, that one's on the high doubles that that's got to be 18 i wouldn't say it's 20 but that's definitely 18 look how fat it is you can almost stroke it stick it near its head mate He wants that bucket. Yeah. Just drop it on his nose, mate. He'll have it. What a beast. Look at that, guys. What an absolute beast of a conga. He's after something in there, isn't he? 
just shows like even though we've got hand lines and that and they're right in front of us they're not always easy to catch look at that lovely size eel though eh mm -hmm. yeah so i can touch his, touch his tail <laughs> sitting there patting it <laughs> He it. smells it. Still want that bucket. That's a good five foot long, that eel, mate. Here we go, look. He smells it. Oh. He wants that bucket. What does he want out of that bucket, though? Oh, oh there we go. There we go. Go on, Sam. <laughs> oh, he's giving a scrap. <laughs> he gets so good. He's got a happy bucket. What a beast, mate. Rattle him. Tug of war style. <laughs> It's Sam Tree vs Conger Eel. <laughs> I win! What a beast, mate. That's a nice one. That is a nice eel, mate. That's got to be another 15. Yeah, for sure. Definitely a 15. What a beauty, mate. That's a lovely fish. Yeah, check that, guys. And that's what they do when they eat. They grab onto prey and spin like that. It's called a death roll. What a lovely eel. You want to move him here a sec? You can see how thick it is by my hand there. That's, got, that's a definitely a good 15 pounder. So I'm just going to get this unhooked. It's a bit wrapped up, this eel. It's a bit lively, isn't it? Definitely. Calm down, mate. I'm trying to help you. So just wrench it right down, mate. There we go. Off she goes. Look at that. Straight down. <laughs> what a beast of an eel. Well done, mate. Cheers, mate. Happy days. That was good fun. <laughs> the eels are starting to turn up. Oh, what a ledge. Eel this, wrestling. What we've noticed from this spot though, eh, mate, is uh, you have to be here on a certain tide, on a certain state of tide as well, otherwise yeah. they don't show up. Definitely. It's really interesting. I don't know if you can see it, guys, up there near the conga, there's rats trying to eat it, but they don't want to come close to us. <laughs> eat my conga, Mr. Rat, we'll come back and eat you. Just packed up now, guys. Just gave the uh, conga a good wash off. Look at that beautiful size eel. Good size conga there guys as you can see i'm six foot one that's got to be best part of four and a half foot long nice size eel perfect for eating that's what we want Ooh. had to get away from those rats see mate yeah nightmare there's a few rats turning up what i'm gonna do is stick this in my bike now i'm gonna head home happy days i'll see you tomorrow guys Back in the kitchen now guys, as you can see I gutted and uh, took the best part off the conga and the rest is in the freezer. So what I'm going to do now is just cut some steaks off and the rest goes to the person that I live with that wants a bit. You see, nice thick conga, plenty of meat, you can see the meat's just bulging out of it. Lovely. So we'll get to that now and we'll start cooking. I don't need too much of this today. So all I'm gonna do is just get about an inch each time and just go straight down, just like that. Inch again and straight down. And what you can do is just follow it round so it's nice and even, all the way down to the bone. Beautiful. Lovely white meat inside these. I so said the bigger the conga the better really for cooking but this sort of size about 15 pound you get some nice little steaks off it so they're actually worth they're worth eating you know anything bigger we like to put them back just for breeding purposes really same as any any other fish lobster bass the bigger they are the more they breed the more eggs they produce and there you go Look at that, lovely sized conga steak there. Get this one off. Beautiful. That looks absolutely amazing. So all we're doing for this, is we've got a little bit of tin foil. Oh, 
fold that in half a bit. So, so. We gotta get our conga fillets in there. Beautiful. And all I've got, just got some whole grain mustard here that I'm just gonna put over the top. And this will all melt straight through the meat. And make it taste delicious. And what we got, a little bit of garlic salt. Got a little bit of chili oil, just to give it that little bit of spice. And then it's not a cook up without the Guernsey butter. Don't have to use Guernsey butter, we just use it because that's our local butter. But uh, any butter would do really. All I'm gonna do is just get some chunks in there. Because every fish tastes good with a bit of butter. Lovely job. So all I'm going to do now, I'm just going to wrap this up. And we'll get her in the oven. There you go. One little parcel, perfectly ready to be cooked. That smells absolutely delicious. Yum. See all the juices in there? So this has just been almost boiled in all the juices, so it just falls apart. Mmm. Yum. This is smelling absolutely delicious. Got that little bit of spice there as well. And it just falls apart. Look how nice and meaty that is. You got all your different flavors in there, nice bit of juice. Mm. It's so delicate when you uh, cook it like this. I put it, what I'll say is as well, I had the oven on 190 Celsius and then uh, I put it in for 30 minutes. And what that does is just break it down and uh, make it so soft. Really easy to eat this is. Mm. get some nice chunks off it as well it does like the uh the meatiness of it is almost like lobster not so much the taste but but yeah the meatiness definitely reminds me a lot more of lobster than actually fish it's quite surprising mm. yeah nice mustard flavor as well and you get that little hint of the uh the chili Mm. I think the only thing I forgot with this was salt and pepper. I didn't put salt and pepper on it, but it's still amazing all the same. Absolutely delicious. Mm. So I won't leave the video any longer, guys. Oh, look at that chunk. That was amazing. If you want any merch, the link's in the description. I'm going to talk off this delicious meal now. This is absolutely amazing with those mustard seeds. It actually makes it that mustard. Yeah, so if you want any merch, the link's in the description. If you want to check out Sam's Instagram, the link's in the description as well. It's Smash Fishing, baby. Woo! Mmm. Big chunk. <laughs>